Hello family. You know, every now and then I have something to talk about. We have a sit down and have a little chit chat or whether I'm talking and that is one of these cases. If you're new here, my name is Angela and this channel is all about beauty, fashion and life. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about some things that I really, really wish I had known in my twenties. <laughs> in my 30s and some of the things I'm just learning recently so but that's okay we're, we're always growing we're always learning you're never too old to learn anything now if you're interested in hearing what I have to say then stay tuned now let's get started Before we get started, this portion of the video is in partnership with Skillshare. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community where thousands of creatives can go to find classes that suit their learning needs. The classes are so inspiring. You find classes like crafting, video editing, Lightroom editing. I did a class, it taught me how to take care of my beautiful plants and also a place just where lifelong learners can go to get information and things that pique their interest. You know, it's a place where if you're a beginner, you can learn things. If you're a, you're a pro, you can still learn things. Skillshare is curated specifically for learners. So there are no ads. There are no ads. So you're not bogged down with all that. And they're constantly launching premium programs and premium classes so that you can scratch that learning itch and focus and nurture your creativity. If you've seen me talk about Skillshare before, you know that my favorite feature is the ability to stop and stop whenever you want. You know, I'm really, really busy. I'm constantly working on creating content for you guys, being a mother, being a grandmother, being a wife, and I need to be able to stop and stop whenever I can. You know, I can start today and then st stop and start again tomorrow or start this morning, go pick the grandkids up, come back and finish what I'm watching. I absolutely love that feature. Right now I'm taking a class with Lily Singh and it's called Social Media Success, Video Storytelling on YouTube and Beyond. I absolutely love this class. You know, it's all about me. It's all about the YouTube, so I'm loving it. And I've, although I've been doing YouTube for a while, she started YouTube, I think she said in 2010, she was just bored and needed something to do. She has over 14 million subscribers. So, you know, even though what she does is not the same as what I do, I knew that I could learn something from her. And she really, really reminded me that I need to come up with a goal. What is, she asked, what is your goal for your channel? And I started my channel just because I couldn't find what I was looking for on YouTube and I just wanted to be that person. But I realized as it's become a business that I really, really need to set goals and she reminded me to make sure I make content that's relatable for my uh, subscribers and I think I do. I think I really think I do with that. So I'm looking forward to watching some more of her, her program so I can learn some more things so that I can get better each time I present a video to you guys. Now, if you'd like to try Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 subscribers who click on my link below will get a one month premium membership to Skillshare and start exploring your creativity. I really, really enjoy using Skillshare. So the first thing that I really, really wish I had known in my 20s or wished that someone had taught me before my 20s is to know my worth. Know my worth and not forget it. I don't know about you, but I, I did have anyone consistently telling me that I was worthy or just pushing me to do my best and be my best and, and letting me know that I was designed for a purpose. You know, if no one has told you ever or even today, know that you are worthy of everything great and wonderful that life has to offer you. If you don't believe that in yourself, just keep telling yourself and keep reminding yourself until you finally believe it. If you don't want to believe for yourself, just tell yourself, Angela said, I am worthy of everything good and great that life has, that life has to offer. Because sometimes you need to hear that. Sometimes you need to tell it, you need to hear it for yourself. But sometimes if that's not been ingrained in you, you just have to keep repeating it, keep repeating it to yourself until you learn to believe that. Because when you learn or when you start to know that you are worthy, life will change for you so drastically. You will stop allowing people to treat you indifferently or treat you in a way that you don't like. When you don't know your worth, you exude that I don't know my, I don't know my worth. I don't know how, but people, people know it. And I, I've seen people 
and couldn't figure out why do they walk with their shoulders slumped or, or the head down like this. And you can just tell when somebody has low self-esteem and they, they don't know their worth. I'm not the type of person with, that would ever, ever, ever take advantage of someone that has low self-esteem, but there are people in this world that will use that to their advantage. So you have to know your worth, period. That's just it, the, the end of it. And know that you were designed for a purpose and you may not know what that purpose is, but you were designed for a purpose and that purpose has worth and you have value. Before you can expect other people to know your worth, you have to know it for yourself. So the, the three things that I value more, the things that I think everyone should know or should have for themselves is joy, respect, and love. If you know your worth, you will have joy. You will have internal joy. You don't seek joy from others from outside places and you need to find joy for yourself. Find out what makes you happy. What do you like to do? What makes you smile? What makes you giggle? What, what's fun for you? You need to do those things. For example, I love going to the movies. I like going to the movies on a day that most people are not there. And I, I'm going to tell you a story before I truly knew my worth. I went to the movies with this guy I was dating and I am, I laugh really loud. I'm always like, I'm loud. I'm loud and it's just the way I'm designed and it's okay. I went to the movies, I don't remember what we were watching, but it was something that was really, really funny. And of course I laughed and it was so loud and he was, and I remember him saying, you're laughing too loud. You're laughing too, like you're laughing too loud completely ruined the moment for me. Now, had I known my worth in that moment, I would have, you know, that, that's, if that dis disturbing you, maybe you need to move, move down there because I'm enjoying myself. But I completely shut down and internalized all of that and just sat there in quiet. Now, what I did do is not ever go to the movie. We never, I never ever went to the movies with him again. Never. I'm not going to the movies and have you mess up my good moment. Like I need to laugh. I need to be able to laugh and enjoy myself. But had I known my worth, I would have stopped him immediately right then and there and said, you know, this is how I feel. This is my, this is who I am. Either you're good with it or you're not. If you're not, you can just move down there or we just won't come back or you can, uh, you can leave. I can whatever but I'm gonna keep laughing and I wouldn't let him ruin that moment for me. So I say all that to say, know what brings you joy and do those things for yourself. That way, when you meet someone or some, or when other people are bringing joy into your life, you're able to recognize that, but you're okay and you're not out seeking that from others because you have that joy for yourself. The second thing you need to have for yourself is respect. You have to have self-respect. If you don't have self-respect, no one's going to respect you. They are not, well, not no one. There are a lot of people that won't respect you. And unfortunately, there are things that we can do that say, or that give the impression that we don't have self-respect. The way you carry yourself in public is a huge, huge one of those. If you're out in public and you're using profanity, you know, it just, it gives the impression that you don't have self-respect. So no, what, so people will feel no problem cursing at you that you're cursing. You're just using it at willy nilly. So I can curse at her if I feel like it, or, you know, they just don't have that level of respect for you. If you're out in public and you just threw on anything to go out the door, it says, I don't respect myself enough to put my best foot forward, or at least put my decent foot forward. You know, I'm gonna look nice when I present myself to the world. Because if you're out, this goes all the way back to the bonnets and the stuff in the airport, and people get upset, and you know, I'm human, I can wear what I wanna wear, I should be treated, I should be treated with respect regardless of what I have, and you should, but you're not, you're, you're not, you're not, and I don't think anyone told me that in my 20s. I didn't go out wearing just, I never wore bedroom shoes and we just didn't do that in my house. But um, I wore things that most 20 year old girls wore when I was I was at age. But I, I've always loved fashion, so I always looked decent going out of the house. I never like went to the grocery store, rolls in my head or anything. I just, I, that just wasn't me. But just make sure that you're having a certain level of respect or just have self-respect and it just, 
it shows in the way you carry yourself, the way you present yourself to the world, and a lot of times in your interactions with other, other people. Just have a level of respect for yourself. And when you have a level of respect for yourself, you know your head is higher, your shoulders sit back, you carry yourself differently than those people who don't have self-respect for themselves. And then that tells other people, this is the expectation that I have for you. I'm gonna, I respect me, so I expect for you to respect me as well. The third thing that I think we should all have to exude to the world so that the world gives it back to us is love for ourselves. You have to love yourself. I know that there are a lot of people who have no love for themselves and, uh, and that's sad and unfortunate, but you have to love yourself in order to teach others to love you. Do things that make you, not just bring you joy and respect, but that say, I love me. Some of the things you can remember is like, celebrate your accomplishments. Don't go around saying, I don't like this about myself or consistently or constantly putting yourself down. That is a horrible thing to do. That is, I mean, you wouldn't do it to someone else. So why would you do it for yourself? Know that you're not perfect, none of us are perfect, and it's okay. You have to be honest with yourself. You can love yourself and be honest with yourself, but just don't be cruel to yourself. If there's something on your body, body, I'm sorry, if there's something on your body that you just do not like, like you don't like your stomach, okay, you don't like your stomach, it is there, there's nothing you can, I mean, there's some things you can do about it, but right, not right now. But I like my legs, so that's okay. But don't go around constantly talking about my stomach's fat, my stomach's fat, so, so what? So what, you're still a beautiful person. What does that have to do with who you are in the eyes of Christ and in the eyes of yourself? You should always show yourself some love and, and just embrace everything that God has given you. He's made you perfect in his own image. He's created you the way he wants you to be. There are things that we can change about ourselves, but don't constantly go around saying negative things about yourself. You know, if you have self-respect and you have joy and you know your worth, you're not gonna let someone else constantly talk about you. So why should you constantly talk about yourself? Show yourself love in order for someone else to show you love. Know that you, show yourself that I love me. And tell, I love me. You can tell people, I, I'll tell somebody quick, I love me now. I, I love some me, you know that you have to love yourself. You have to love yourself. And when you love yourself, it attracts other people to you. It really, really does. When you love yourself, you attract love. You attract men that will love you. Not just men, just people that will love you, but men as well. Men can sense a woman that does not have, production is around here shaking his head. They can sense a woman that does not know her worth and they can sense a woman that has joy and respect for herself and that loves herself and they will treat her as such. And you know, there will be moments in relationships where there'll be disagreements or just when you're getting to know one another where he may feel, you, he may uh, cross a boundary that, that you have that he may not know of, but in those moments you stop and say, I, I, don't, I don't like that, I don't like that. And that will come from a place of knowing your worth that would come from a place of joy, a, a place of self-respect, a place of self-love. And people will, and especially men, will respect that. Now, if he's a person that continues to do that, that says that he didn't care about your worth. He didn't care about your self-love, your self-respect, your joy. He only wants what he wants. And then you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision. Is this something you're gonna to tolerate, continue to tolerate? Because it's not gonna get better unless he wants it to get better. Regardless of what you do, it's not going to get better. So that's the point that you have to make a decision. Whether I'm not, I'm not doing this. You have to have enough love for yourself to say, this is not what I want. I'm worthy of more than this. I'm worthy of joy. I'm worthy of respect. I'm worthy of love. And this is not what you're giving me. What you're doing shows me that you don't have all these things for me. So, you know, I'm gonna have to cut this off. It's not that easy. But at the bottom line, that, that's what it is. You have to, the, the process is not easy. I know, I've had to do it several times. So the process is not easy, but the bottom line is that's what has to be done. The second thing that I wish I had known in my 20s and in my 30s, I think I started listening, I knew it in my 40s, my early 40s. So that is to listen to that still voice. For, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to laugh. I'll tell you in a minute while I'm laughing. Listen to that still voice. For me, I think that still voice in my head, for me, I think it's Christ talking to me because I don't think he put me on this earth 
to suff to suffer at every turn. So I think he's always been there whispering. Now, you know, some people are hard headed. <laughs> I've been one of them, been hard headed and have, the, you know, have that still voice saying, don't do that, don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. And did it anyway, did it anyway and blamed it on everybody except for me, blamed it on everybody except for me and didn't even think that have the foresight to think that Christ was with, he was whispering to you. He told you not to do it. He told you not to do it. So in my early to mid forties, I started listening to that still voice and it completely changed my life. Now, if you're like me, you have two little still voices. <laughs> What's that still? It just reminds me of like seeing a picture with the, with the, the angel and the devil on each shoulder. And I have Christ you know, whispering in my ear and then I have the, my, I have Angela, like hood, little hood Angela. We call it Shell Nene because my middle name is Michelle. My husband called it Shell Nene from, Shell Nene from, uh, what was the name on Martin Lawrence? That was Shanae Nene. Shanae on Martin Lawrence. Y'all remember Shanae Nene on Martin Lawrence? That's how, that's how she is. She is exactly like Shanae Nene on Martin Lawrence. We call it Shell Nene. Shell Nene would tell you, tell me to do stuff that is just not nice. It's, it, she doesn't bother people, but she's, a, she's just like Shanae Nene. If somebody confronts her, whoo, somebody confronts me and, and, and tries to do me wrong, my still voice is trying to tell, is telling me how to handle this situation in a professional, in a Christian-like manner. And Shell Nene is saying, girl, get, <laughs> get with them. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to, I have to squash that voice because that's just, I'm human and you know, you, it's like you can take the girl out of the, out of the hood, but you can't really take all the hood out of the girl. That's who, that's who she is. And 99% of the time I, I do listen to that steel voice and, and listen to, you know, I'm an older woman now. This is the way th that sort of behavior is very, very inappropriate. You have a child, you have grandchildren, there are people who are looking at you. You have to show them how to carry themselves in this sort of, sort of situation. So sometimes I'm in a situation and I get very quiet because I don't want the words to come out of my mouth. The words that are swirling around in my head, I don't want them to come out of my mouth. And I need a moment. I need a moment to get myself together to be professional and Christian-like. And, and say what I need to say in a way that uh, does, it's not gonna make me look bad, to be honest. I say all that to say, listen, learn to listen to that still voice. It will guide you. I think that still voice is there to help you dodge some of the, some of the valleys in the road, some of the rocks that come your way. Just, just listen to them. Just, and you know, you can just, I just and pray about it and, and think about it, but just try to, learn to listen to that still voice. We all have one, we all have one. Just try to learn to listen to it. It's, it's not gonna steer you wrong. The next thing I wish I had known in my 20s is that we all have a purpose in life. You're just not put here just to do and be and just go and go and go. There's a purpose for our life. And, and it may take years for you to know what that purpose is and that is quite okay. It is so sad and I'm sure I did it too. To see girls in their, well people in their 20s, boys too, trying to figure out what is my life gonna, what am I here for? Boy, you just got out of high school. You just, you just graduated college. What do you mean what are you supposed to be doing with your life? You're not supposed to know what you're supposed to be doing in your life. Use that time to enjoy your life learn to grow and, and gather friends and just figure out what you want to do. You have a purpose and you have time to figure out what that purpose is. And sometimes it's not you figuring out what that purpose is. That purpose will find you. You don't have to look for it. It'll find you or somehow it'll just manifest itself. You'll just like, I figured out, oh, you know, I've been a nurse for 25 years. And, but even before that, I was a nursing assistant and I've always taken care of people. And so I realized that my purpose in life is a caregiver. I was put here to care for people. I absolutely love 
taking care of people. I love taking care of babies. I love, love, love taking care of the elderly. I love listening to their stories. I am that I'm just that kind of person. I'm very kind and very cat compassionate and very nurturing with people. So I know that I was put here as a caregiver. It didn't dawn on me that all these things that I did in life were because I was put here to be a caregiver. I, it just, it just hit me one day, probably a, a couple of years ago. Oh, it was like, oh, that's why I was put here. Okay. That's why I love nursing. That's why I love doing this. And even doing YouTube, I'm caring for people. I, because I, I really, really want to show you how to feel and look your best using fashion. And I know that superficial sometimes, but I know how I feel. I know how I, little girls feel when they put on dresses and they're twirling. I know that joy that's in their eyes. So I know what a great outfit can do to transform your self image or, or how you feel about yourself, even if it's just for a moment. And so I feel like that is me still being a caregiver. It's not necessarily hands on, but I still feel like that's me being a caregiver, showing women that my age that listen, hey, we still look fly. We can still look fly. We can still look cute. It is not over. We can have cute hair. We can have cute earrings. We can put on makeup and just feel and look our best. And, and not necessarily, you don't even have to do any of that, but just like this sort of video here where I can tell you that, you know, love yourself, do things to bring yourself joy. I think all of y'all, I'm tell you what you should do. Well, it's a little cold now. When it warms up again, when it warms up again on a really hot day in the summer, when it's raining, go outside and dance in the rain. It is so much fun. The last time I did it was with my grandson. My daughter and my niece were standing on the porch because they had perms, they had relaxers. They had relaxers in their hair then. And I have a video, I'll see if I can find a video. It's been a long time though of me and Gabe outside in the rain dancing. There was the water was running down the sidewalk. It was a lot of it running down the sidewalk. We were dancing it, <laughs> dancing in the rain. And I came with this, came up with a song because uh, they were scared to come out because they didn't want to mess up their hair. You know, we call relaxers creamy crack. And, and me and I started saying, look at them with that creamy crack. Look at them with that creamy crack. So me, me and my grandson were dancing in the rain, singing, look at him with that creamy crack as they were sitting up on the porch laughing. But it was so amazing. It, just, it was just so amazing. And I think most people don't even do that, don't even take the time to experience the, um, the gift of rain, how it brings life, and then the gift of the warmth so you're not getting cold. It's just, a, it was just, amazing and as soon as it get warm again next year i'm gonna make sure gabe's over here we're gonna go dance in the rain again i will videotape it and show y'all though but again just know that you have a purpose in this life and you may not know that until the day before you die but you do have a purpose in this life the next thing i wish i had known in my 20s i wish somebody had told me is do not be afraid to travel you don't have to travel internationally i'm from greensboro north carolina i was I, I was just really afraid to travel. I don't know what I was afraid of. I just did, I was just complacent and just happy just being in that little city. But I, I try to tell my daughter, get out and explore the world. Even if you're afraid to travel for, to another state, do yourself a favor, travel an hour, hour and a half away to the next biggest town. Go online and look at the visa, the tourist places and um, what to do in such and such town take yourself for the weekend, or even if it's just for like an all day, leave early Saturday morning, drive down, go to the museums. I love museums. Go to the museums, hit all the touristy spots, and um, take yourself out to eat, and come back home. Just That will get, get you in the habit of just going different places. There are a lot of you that, not a lot, there are some people that don't like to fly. Now, to see really, really amazing things, you're gonna have to fly. But just to get in the habit of traveling and seeing new things and seeing new faces and experiencing new experiences and tasting new foods and that sort of thing, it is absolutely amazing. I wish someone had told me in my 20s that you need to go out and explore life and travel a little bit. I really didn't start traveling until I was well into 
well into my 30s, like well into my 30s. And But the first time I really started traveling is I went on cruises. I started going on cruises and cruises are nice, but there is nothing like traveling by plane to somewhere and staying in and in taking advantage of the of the culture for several days. Going on a cruise ship and then stopping at port for, you know, even for a day is completely different than going for days at a time. I wish someone had told me, try to learn how and enjoy traveling. The last thing that I wish someone had taught me in my 20s, um, because I didn't do this until I was probably in my early 40s as well. When you are single, take yourself on a date. Listen. Get dressed, just do the exact same thing that you would do if you were going with a man. Get dressed, put your clothes on, get cute, spray your little perfume on, put your little makeup on, take yourself on a date, take yourself out to eat, take yourself to the movies, take yourself wherever you would like to go on a date, take yourself. You know, why should you wait for someone else to do that for you? You should be able to enjoy the experience. You should be able to enjoy time with you. The first few times I took myself out to eat, it was so strange. It was really, really strange. And I remember, I think I went to Outback, <laughs> went to Outback and I love the coconut shrimp. Oh my God, it's so good. Went to Outback and I sat at the bar, ordered myself a drink, just one drink because I was driving. Um, ordered myself some coconut shrimp and a few little things that I like. And then uh, it, it felt really, really strange at first. Don't think I really enjoyed it as much, but I knew in my head I need to do this for me. I need to, I need to get myself in the habit of taking care of myself, taking myself out to eat, showing myself a good time. And then by the time the third time I did it, whoop, it was a psh piece of cake. I'm sitting at that bar. You can tell me I wasn't cute. Enjoying myself watching the football game. I just really, really started enjoying taking myself out. And so that way when I has, when I started dating again, these are the sort of things I expect, you know, I, I know what to expect. This is where I like to go. This is where I like to eat. You know, it wasn't, where do you want to go? I don't know. I don't, well, I don't know. Uh, well, I, and I tried to take myself, especially to dinner, take myself to a different restaurant each time. So I got to taste the different cuisines and see what's good at this restaurant. You kind of get to meet some of the waitress staff and some of the um, chefs at different restaurants. It's really nice to take yourself out to eat. And I wish I had done that more in my 20s. That way I got used to being entertained even if I was entertaining myself well that's it family now if you enjoy these type of videos and you have something you'd really really like for me to discuss in a future video please please leave me a comment in the description box and don't forget if you'd like to try out Skillshare the link is in the description box below just go ahead and click that link and thank you and have a blessed blessed day bye bye